Hey everyone, welcome back to another Imperfect Chess video. My name is Sean and today I'm going to show, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about preparing for your openings using the chess base piece probability diagram thingy. It's actually something that I've been playing with lately. I haven't really used it a lot until fairly recently. And I kind of want to show you how I do it um, as I try to learn some of the openings that, that I'm building. So um, right now I've been working on the... Uh, once again, I, I call it the perk, the Pierce perk opening. And uh, there is this feature within Chess Base 12. I think it's been around since, I'm not even sure how long it's been in the Chess Base family. But it's something I've always sort of played with, and I've never really appreciated it until now since I'm trying to learn this new opening. So let me show you um, exactly what I do with this. So um, I've got a clear clip base. We're going to make sure that's totally... Empty, uh, so you can see get zero games there because I'm going to copy some games there. And what I'm going to do is try to grab a nice chunk of games using the opening that I'm studying. Whatever opening you might be studying, you can do the same type of thing. So I'm open up and I've got here, um, this is my mega database and it has my large collection of 5.7 million games or something like that. And let's just go in and do a search on what we're studying. So I want to get into the BO7. That just happens. I know the code for it, and if you know, if you, I'm hoping you, you might know or you can figure out the ECO code of whatever opening you're looking for. You could always just enter it via maybe the position mode or something like that. But I've got the I know what the ECO code is, and what I'm going to do is I want to look at games where black is one, and I want to make sure that there are no games with guys like me playing. I want good players and not blitz games. I want real games. So. There's this automatic filter in chess space. It's not perfect, but it's a quick and easy way to make sure you get a good list of games. It's called Good Games. And it tries to just make sure they're high quality games, high level players playing, and it doesn't include any weird games or blitz games or anything like that. So um, you could manually invent your own filter for Good Games by choosing that the ELO is at a certain level or whatever, but this is just a simple way to do that. So we're looking at this opening. We're looking at... Uh, Black wins only, and good games. And if we click OK, we go through quickly, and it's going to find a good chunk of games. And so there's probably a million ways to do this, but what I do it is I just highlight them all, and I right-click, edit, and I'm going to clip them. And what that does, now I can close this up. I now have 30,000 games in my clip database. So it's like a little mini temporary database. I'm not going to keep it this database for long after this little exercise. It's just a, a throwaway thing for me to take a look at. And I've got 30,000 games in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search, or excuse me, I'm going to select on all of them. Once again, there's probably a million ways to do it, but this is how I do it. Just go and then shift, uh, click on the bottom. Now they're all highlighted. Right click, piece probability, and there we go. And it's going to take a minute to put all this together, and I'm going to go down to one to one. I'm going to make sure that it's a time on square I'm looking at, and I'm going to try to get a sense. For some of the key pieces for how these good players play this defense because it's not just about memorizing lines and memorizing moves you're trying to see themes and so now i have been studying this defense on my own uh, with my own books and things like that this is not the only way that i'm learning it so this is supposed to complement the other work i'm doing i'm going to take a look first of all at the queen and i click on the black queen here and this highlights how much time the black queen is spent on every square. We're on move one, so 100% of the time the black queen is on d8. Not a big surprise. And what I can do is just increment this one at a time, and it's going to take a look and say, okay, for all the time and all of these moves, the black queen is there. And if I just go up, and I'm going to do this to about 10 moves and try to get a sense of where and when black. And you can see now that as early as the fourth move, it looks like there's been one or two, a small amount of games actually has the queen move out here. And you can increase, and you really see there's actually a few more games in there spread out this way. And what I've learned in studying the Peart's opening is this is the common diagonal for the black, uh, for the black queen. It's frequently come out here, which I think is common in the French as well. Uh, but don't mind me, I'm not a good player, so, you know, um, don't, by all means, this isn't for me giving advice on these openings, but just how I learned them. And you, I can see a little bit there, and you can always change the scale. And you can start to see there's a little bit of cropping up, but on the, the, a large majority, 
This is where the queen, the first six, seven, and for the second chunk, it goes down when it calculates and pops back up. And you can see here that the queen can be fairly active in the game, but clearly this is the diagonal the queen is playing on, and probably where things are coming out on that side. So, okay, so I'm trying to pick up on some of these things. Let's give up on the queen for a moment, and let's take a look at dark squared knight. And once again, I'm just going to try to get an idea of where the dark squared knight goes. And I know in the Pirates you often, or not often, but you'll sometimes get um, a c6 move for black. I know c5 is somewhat common too, and the 6c move uh, for the pawn would obstruct the, the knight coming down. So knight d7 is not that unusual, and I had read that, and I can see, as a matter of fact, for these games, just grabbing all the games as a whole, knight d7 is actually more common than knight c6. And in the first six moves, and although the, the, the knight does do some movement, you can see clearly most games here, still the, the knight hasn't moved at all, and when the knight has moved, it's usually in these two spots here. And that's what I'm picking up from this. If I want to jump to the white knight and go back down, you're probably going to see the in right away, because obviously the whole part of the perch defense is to get the knight out quickly and build a fortress for the king early on. And so it's no surprise, three, four moves, and the knight is either not moved or is already on that square. And I think you're going to find generally this is the square that it's going to spend most of the time, but there is some active, which is interesting, right? And we know that an, if a white pushes e5, d7 is where the knight is often supposed to go in the pirates. And so you can see some movement there. And of course, there's sometimes some movement out, out in the field as well. And I'm trying to just get a sense of the patterns that the knight goes in. I want to take a quick look at the bishop, and here I can even start, if I don't want to go through all the moves, let's just go in the first nine moves and just take a look there, and you can see in the first nine moves, the most common spot for the light square bishop is actually still not to have moved, but where the, where the white bishops normally move in this defense with these players in games, the black is one, is all the way out to here into G, uh, G4, which is, er, which is interesting. Actually, I didn't quite realize how aggressive that was. Um, and then, of course, some more conservative moves up there. And I haven't even looked at this, but let's take a look at the the two rooks. Obviously, we've got castling and pushing out there, which is no surprise. But the the light squared rook really hasn't moved much at all in the first nine moves. I guess which is not a huge surprise. And a little bit over into the B file to protect whatever is going on there. And the pawn structure not helpful. First, but if we take the scale down a little bit and go back on the move structure a bit, we can sort of see the common pawn structure. We know, obviously, with the pierce, this is the key move for the pierce is d6, right? And we know that we can see that there. What we can see is the aggressive uh, e5, which I know to look for when it's appropriate. And what I'm surprised is c6 is more common than c5. I actually thought c5 would be more common. And I've been reading about the C6 push and the C5 push. And, but that's interesting. And that's something that I'm trying to, you know, I'm still trying to learn on pawn structure for this. So, you know, this is, a, and um, I've, I've mentioned Chess Space Complete before, which is John Edwards' book. And he, he also mentions, this is a really neat feature that he doesn't use that often, but he likes to look at. And I'm not too sure what I'm proving myself doing this. I think I'm just sort of, what I'm trying to do, I guess, is I've been reading books on the opening and then coming over here and trying to look at these collection of games or similar collection of games to try to sort of see the patterns the pieces follow. And it is interesting, is if you jump from opening to opening, as you would expect, you see completely different patterns. And I think as a really uh, low-level player, I do sometimes um, carry a pattern from one opening that worked to me and try to force it in another, which is not the best way to necessarily think of these openings. So I'm finding this useful and to reinforce my learning. It's not really an essential feature clearly, but it's kind of cool. And it's using the math and the statistics in the background in a graphical format that that is helping me sort of understand or picture some of the 
the more difficult concepts that are trying to be conveyed in a book, which are hard to convey in, in a book often. So I think it's pretty cool. I thought I would share it because I've been playing with it and I thought you might have some fun with it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you get a second, uh, click on the button, subscribe, and pop by imperfectchess.com and check out our work there. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Cheers.